talking about cerebral palsy uh, i know a lot of you have probably heard of it but don't really know what it is that is why we have uh, mr manoke japon who is a lecturer and program coordinator at the community-based rehabilitation and disability studies at the university of education winneba and mrs Le uh, diane lyle who is a physiotherapist with uk charity cerebral palsy africa they are here to educate us a bit on the whole uh, phenomenon. Now, thanks for joining us, lady and gentleman. I'll start with you, Diane. Tell us a little bit about what cerebral palsy is. Cerebral palsy is damage within the brain, mm -hmm. uh, which affects the movement uh, and the movement of, of the child. Um, it can affect the movement in different ways. They can be very Height, right. Or they can be uh, very uncoordinated mm. and their movements are look very strange. And what causes this? Why is that? There are many causes, mm. but the, it's during the pregnancy, around the birth, um, and immediately after. The main cause around birth is failure to breathe quickly so they don't get enough oxygen uh, quickly after birth mm. and soon after birth it can be uh, jaundice which is not treated early and uh, if the child has or mother has severe malaria right that is also cause now Emmanuel I read somewhere that exposure to toxic chemicals is one of the risk factors can you tell us some other risk factors when it comes to cerebral palsy oh, for risk factors uh, I think that most of them iodine, iodine deficiency can cause that mm. and uh, prolonged delivery sometimes uh, at the hospital look, looking at the distances from where the mother stays uh, asphyxia, lack of oxygen, can damage part of the brain. Mm. And when there's a slighter part of the brain, that co uh, that's in charge of the movement of uh, the body. Right. Then uh, it can result in cerebral palsy. Is this curable, Diane? Is cerebral palsy curable? No, it's not curable. Mm. But the effects of cerebral palsy can be minimized managed. and managed mm. if the intervention is put in place yeah. early. Right. Early intervention is key. is the key. Uh, very important. So access to physiotherapists mm. uh, who have the knowledge of cerebral palsy. You have an organization, Multi Kids Africa. Uh, what's the organization doing to help kids with cerebral palsy? The organization is uh, it, it's involved in supporting children mm -hmm. with cerebral palsy mm -hmm. um, through advocacy and through education and through teaching other organizations and other teachers. Um, it, it helps uh, a particular school which mm -hmm. is a very inclusive school so it has children in mainstream but also children with disabilities. Right. Now, um, we know you're holding a training yeah. uh, for teachers who teach these kids. Tell us a little bit about the training. Okay. The, the focus of the training is that uh, um, looking at the country at the moment, we are trying to go inclusive. Inclusive education means that all children should have access to the various classrooms. And having access will mean that uh, they should, the teacher should be receptive to the mm. needs of these students. Mm. So the students should not g get access and go and sit in the classroom without necessarily doing anything. So sometimes, most of the, these CP children are not being admitted or they are not in school. Uh, due to the fact that the teachers lack the competency or the skills to manage them. Mm. So this training which has been put up by uh, DFID, DFID and uh, Mortikis Africa, mm. and then involving teachers across the country, inviting selected teachers across the country, northern, Ashanti, eastern, western, all the as, uh, part of the country are represented. So the focus of the training is to equip these, these teachers right. with skills, relevant skills. Mm. And then the teachers uh, during the training has had opportunity to work with all types of C CP children. And they, they have the practical demonstration and we believe that having these skills, they will go back to their schools and communities to transform.
Now, Diane will uh, shortly take us through how to uh, uh, care for a child with cerebral palsy, but I want to know the impacts that that training is going to have on teachers and then subsequently students who are living with cerebral palsy so they can study in schools. Yeah, the, the, the relevance of this training is that uh, the teachers will now be equipped with the skills. Mm. And so, well, most of the teachers are not uh, maybe uh, uh, allowing the children in their classroom because this category of children pre present unique challenges. Right. So without this, these skills, it's difficult to, to include you them in the class. some particular skills. The skills to tr know? train them. Yeah. So this uh, training is exposed, uh, exposing teachers to the variety of mm. skills they need to get, the information they need them to do. But this is a collaborative approach because it's not only the physiotherapists. We have the local resource people, we have a occupational therapy teams, we have physiotherapy team in Ghana. And th this is the beginning of uh, something that a board step that DFID have put together because we will follow through and then we will visit uh, the schools where these students have had the initial training mm. to ensure that they are applying this principle to ensure that uh, we have a better Ghana and better inclusive agenda mm. for our CP children. Diane is ready with the demonstration. Uh, she will take us shortly through it. Um, as you can see on your screen, she's ready uh, just to demonstrate how to care for a child living with cerebral palsy. So Diane, take us through it. How is it supposed to be done? One of the most important thing with a child with cerebral palsy is to get their positioning correct. Mm. If the child lies on the floor all the time, they are likely to develop tight muscles which can lead to deformities. Right. So the positioning which we can make using assistive devices made from cardboard. Cardboard. Um, we use cardboard, paper, um, and flour and water paste mm. and we make weak materials strong using engineering principles so we can use we can have um, standing frames we can make chairs right. for use in school to encourage movement so when the child is on their tummy we can help them strengthen their head control mm. and their back by putting them in these correct positions gently mm. yes mm. and then if we can sit them well maybe if their legs go straight we put something to stop their legs mm -hmm. going straight and then again we can put the tray with maybe a communication board right like this or we can use one where we can look through we can look at the child the child can point maybe just with their eyes right. maybe they can only see they can only look but we can also see what they're looking at mm. and so we can ask them uh, what they what they want and they look at the picture with food we ask them if they are thirsty and they can look at the yes mm. picture or if they need to go to the toilet also in school making the access uh, and using assistive devices around toileting again is a very important aspect so we can encourage them we can show how to make a standing frame so that a child is able to look uh, and watch the teacher and other people can see the child standing up right so it's it's very good for many of the body functions mm -hmm. but also it's very important for that child uh, it makes it makes the child instead of being on the floor it brings them up they become standing upright more real mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. uh, and so people t it improves the social interaction uh, with with a person with right. a child um, so the sitting is very important in school and standing so we're teaching the teachers right we have been teaching them about cerebral palsy mm. how to adapt the classroom the curriculum and then we are at the moment we are teaching them how to do appropriate paper-based technology which is uh, how to use the tech the technology so they are all going to make 
a stool mm -hmm. to take home like this. Uh, so you start and then this, my demonstration stool shows all the different l stages you go through till you finish. Right. And then they will also make uh, chairs for particular children who we've, we've seen and we're hoping um, that we can make s a standing frame mm. as well to show uh, the benefits within the classroom um, of standing. I think some of them will also make uh, the communication boards because they were very interested in those because it helped them understand and mm. realize that some children who cannot speak, they are non-verbal, are very intelligent, mm. particularly one type of cerebral palsy where they have not had oxygen at birth um, and they have particular movements which make them look very different uh, because of their types of movements right, right, like right. that mm. and it affects their speech mm -hmm. and their feeding and their swallowing so we have also been giving them ideas on how to make feeding safer. Um, so okay, Diane. Um, so Diane has been demonstrating how to care for children living with cerebral palsy. There's uh, going to be a training for teachers who will subsequently, you know, put that uh, into teaching the students how to study in classes. Now, Diane is a uh, physiotherapist with UK Charity Cerebral Palsy Africa. And we've also been speaking with Mr. Emmanuel K. Champon, who is the lecturer, program coordinator, and community-based rehabilitation and disability studies at the University of Education, Winneba. Now, after